All right, what do we want to do next? Is there... I think... Listen to what... Oh, so we have to go to Loringen now. Got it. Yep. Both thinking. All right, we don't have the uh, thingy. There's a geo uh, point over there. Yeah, because we never got the geo point for Loringen. And a treasure chest. A couple of treasure right. chests. Yeah, I don't think that we had the uh, geo board when we first came here. Nope, we didn't get the geo board until we got to Stonebury. Stonebury Farms remembers. Exactly. I remember us making that joke too. Yep. Well, to be fair, it's an easy one. It is quite easy. Yes, yeah, quite, quite. <laughs> Well, before we talk to her, let's talk to these guys. The elemental Imperians are awake, but their powers clash and the balance is breaking. But what else can you expect after rousting them so impolitely? Will apologizing help? <laughs> because we're sorry. <sighs> I'm afraid it won't be that easy, but neither should I be so eager to cast blame. If we don't do something, the world will be torn apart. We will attempt to hold it together by expanding our domain so the Empyreans can find an equilibrium. Ryoiki <laughs> Tenkei? Long, long ago in the land of Loringen, there was a haven for Malakim and humans with residents. There was a sad parting, however, and many of the Malakim chose to sleep within the land. They did so with the dream of a world where humans and Malakim could coexist. But in the end, they were fruit ripe to be plucked and dropped into Inominat's basket. And then they were given to the exorcists. Coexisting with humans is a hard lot. Yes, but giving up on that dream would make the tragedy even more senseless. I couldn't bear that. I looked at some volumes on history written by humans, and they're rather spotty. Spans lasting tens of thousands of years have been reduced to mere hundreds. Recent events are fine, but information from days when Moloch influence was strong is rife with errors. This is because of a Nominat's suppression in the past, but still, it seems such a waste. We won't forget what humans did to us. As an exorcist, I apologize for our brutal treatment of Malakim. I am deeply sorry. That's only the start of it. Do you even know why the elemental Empyreans were asleep? It's because people forgot to honor them for protecting this world. I am deeply sorry for that as well. No sense in beating you up over it, but still. Only believing in what you can see with your own eyes may be humanity's biggest failing. Alright, let's talk with you. Hey, I got a question. Were you one of the Norman who traveled with Artorius? Why, sure! Are you a relative of his or something? Tell me, what happened here? No can do. That ain't something I can just go blabbing about. I'm a follower of Melchior's, who in turn stood behind Claudin. Please, we'd like to know. Well then, this place is where Claudin died. It all happened more than ten years ago. Claudin had taken an oath never to kill, but he broke it to save the life of Artorius, his most beloved disciple. Another death on his hands. Nah! Arturius didn't do nothing wrong. There was no other way Clodden could have saved the boy. Besides, Clodden had nearly stretched that oath to its limits. Clodden believed in the purity of Arturius' spirit. He entrusted his hopes and the very future of the world to his disciple. Sad thing is, Arturius just kept blaming and blaming himself for the death of his master. That sounds like him. So he tried to do everything he could to live up to Clodden's ideals, with no one else to help. He traveled the world teaching folks about Malachim and them dreadful demons, and how important it is to have a pure heart. But people had lived in peace so long, they didn't care for his stories. And in the end, the four Empyreans drifted into slumber. Once again, Arturius felt he had nobody to blame but himself. So what did he do? He started talking about how if we stuck with him, he'd turn us into demons. So he journeyed to the east. All by his lonesome. He went east. Say, how is Artorius doing these days? What's he been up to? Uh, thanks for sharing your story. I know it must not be the easiest thing to talk about. 
Midgant has become a dangerous place. You should go back to Norman Island before you turn into a demon. Uh... So, our young head exorcist, racked with despair and helplessness, gave everything up and headed to the east! So then, to East Gand, I guess? Maybe to a ball? Velvet, why don't we stop in a ball? I feel like we're being called there. Yeah, I feel it too. It wasn't duty that the king entrusted Artorius with. It was hope. And hope crushed the man. Alright, on to a ball. Back again to a ball to deal with our trauma once again. Trauma! Yeah, that one felt a little weird where it's like, maybe to a ball. We should stop by a ball. Yeah. We were just talking about that. I was like, I was like... Did, did you not? Maybe it's like having something to do with the translation where it's like repeating the phrase again or something. What is that called? Aizuchi or something like Aizu that? Aizuchi, maybe. Yeah, I think, yeah, I think it's Aizuchi. Because we're talking about that with the Metal Gear Solid game, too. Yep. Once I saw this place, it all started to make sense. Artorius must have lived a happy and peaceful life here. Who are you? Who, me? I'm a Norman who traveled the continent with Artorius years ago. He's been on my mind quite a lot lately. So I followed a rumor that led me here. That Princessia, were you the one who put it out? Nope, wasn't me. It was already here when I arrived. Do you know the deeper symbolic meaning behind the Princessia flower? It can mean an irreplaceable treasure. Or that you wish them well for years to come. Then the one who planted it was... Yep, that's right. The person lying in this grave saved the life of a certain someone who had been worn down and broken by his mission. Thank you. <laughs> the poor fellow. He was always so serious. So deadly... Deadly serious. And he was practically always being strangled by his own conscience. So much so that he deluded himself into believing he needed to erase the emotions of the human race he so dearly loved. Please, if I may, somehow, some way, set the poor guy free. Oh, I intend to. But my version of setting him free might be a bit different from yours. Well, I'm still counting on you, Lord of Calamity. <laughs> I think I understand Artorius's past now. Yeah, no matter who you are or how far up the chain you climb, life never entirely goes your way. You said it. As much as he claims to be a man of reason, he still managed to give in to sentiment enough to plant flowers here. Not only can he not protect the ones he loves, he can't even permit himself to be free. Indeed. But I think that's human nature, too. I suppose. But I'd also say he has an inner strength like no one else. He lost his master and his wife, and yet he overcame those failures to rise again as the shepherd. I get that. But it doesn't absolve his crimes. I have to settle the score with him. Yeah. I'll be with you until the very end, Velvet. Are you sure that's really something you want to say in front of your sister's gravesite? All the more reason. She should hear this. Expedition returned. Give me that. Money. There we go. Free shit. Good luck. I'm not the only one counting on you. Alright, so that was the end of that thing now, but... else? I don't think so. Huh. Um, let me see if I can find the black turtles, because that's definitely another thing we're missing. Yeah. Cute little story, though. More insight into Artorius is always nice. Okay. Did we get 
Edna's reply? I don't think so. Okay. Then we need to go to the Imperian's throne. To the Imperian's throne. So, Port Zexan East. Oh, I see two two combo things up here. Yep. Yeah, speak with the cats outside the Imperian throne to receive Edna's reply and the skit to your brother. Oh, right, because um, we need the reply back from Aizen's sister. Yep. Apparently her name's Edna. Edna, Edna. Mode. And friend. And guest. <laughs> Hiya! I got another letter for you, Aizen. He's actually wearing the glasses in this one. That's cute. Hey, are you okay? What does it say? I can't read it right now. One of you do it. Uh, okay. Dear brother, I got your letter. Not sure why it was so tattered. I'm glad that you were able to tell me how you really feel, even though it was beyond obvious by now. Your clear descriptions of the self-defense Moloch arts allowed me to master them quickly, despite your terrible grammar. As weird as it feels writing this to a pirate, good luck with your work, and I know how to keep a secret. So please keep writing me letters. My life doesn't revolve around them, but I do enjoy hearing from you. I can't see the oceans you sail from my perch here on the mountain, but I'm thinking of you and praying for your safety. And I want you to know I'm doing fine. <sighs> oh, looks like she's just as roundabout and stubborn as her brother. It must run in the family. There's more. P.S. Thanks for the Nor dolls. They're not really all that cute, but I guess I like them a little bit. But ever since I got that last one, I hear this voice at night telling me I should write you and be here for you when you need to vent. It's actually rather annoying, but since the doll is a gift from you, I'll make a special exception for it. That's all. Sounds like she's really got it together. You know, I don't think we ever asked you her name. Edna. That's a pretty name. Glad you think so. I'm the one who named her. Good, good title. Now, what's this question block? Oh no, this is bad! Catastrophic meow! What am I going to do? Hey Velvet, what's a cat's doing all the way out here? And she's in quite a state at that. Definitely odd. Maybe she's had a bit too much catnip. Don't act like you don't have a paw in this. Meow Killoris is going crazy right meow. Uh... Do you think that's because I woke up the Empyreans? You think? Of course it is, Meow. Take some personal responsibility. My, it must be quite the scene to make a cat so, ahem, furious. W well, it's not my problem. I'm no hero and no friend of the cats. So then you're a villain? A dog lover, perhaps? Come on, she looks like she's in real trouble. Positively, Meow. All right, fine. Just go to Meow Killerus and I'll give you a cat's towel. A cat's towel? I don't know what that is, but I want one. Let's help her out, Velvet. We owe it to her. I suppose. I swear, everyone's such a sucker for cats. Get to the crater and you'll see what's going on. Hurry! Meow. What makes this cat's towel so unique? It just looks like a normal cloth to me. Maybe there's more to it. It did belong to a cat's. Huh. I cannot say why, but I have this sudden urge to leave everything else behind and wear only this towel. Please don't. Oh, if you insist. I guess even demons have some lines they shouldn't cross. Yes, definitely. That's enough, you two. Let's just start heading to Mount Killer House. I guess we're going to Mount Killer House. On the double. Spring outfit for Rokuro. Alright, um... Can we actually get to there? No, we have to go to Merchuo or whatever it's called. And go this way. Edge of survivability. But now on the edge. 
Of glory? Of madness. Glory, madness, despair. It's all the same thing, really, to Artorias. Fair enough. Alright. Mount Killerouse, what you got for us? Tiny. Never mind. Can't carry it. You got far too much crap in your pockets. True. I will save, though, real quick. Considering everything we've done and the last thing we want is to get surprised by something and be like, oh, well, that was actually a lot tougher than it should have been. Mm-hmm. There we go. Oh yeah, the lizard paladins. I forgot about them. It's just Dragonfolk Paladins before 5th edition got to them. Alright, what you got for a, a portal? Okay, I'll bite. Is this an Earth Pulse? I sense something strange up ahead. I feel it too. It's Rage. something new. Let's proceed with caution. I don't think this is any ordinary Earth Pulse. Uh, I hate fucking earth pulses. Oh, what the? Okay. Not worth my time. Okay. Um, I don't really care about I we don't about chests at this point. So, you can have okay. fun. Bye, Diggy. Huh? Are we back at the volcano? I don't think so. Precisely correct. These are the heavenly steps. Yeah. The Heavenly Steps? It's a space where the world's secrets are tucked away. It's got an appalling power that draws in Malachim, you know? My cat's friends couldn't resist and got pulled deep inside. So then you are Malachim. No, we're cats. Cats are just cats. They went in because they were curious. You know what they say about cats and curiosity. This place was sealed away until you opened it up. I'd say you share a good portion of the blame. Meow. If it was sealed before, there's probably a strong chance it was for a very good reason. No kidding. And it's bad news if it can attract Malachim. It's probably not something we should just ignore. What do you think, Velvet? Should we go and have a look? Please. My friends were reckless, but that's no reason to abandon them. Meow. Turn back. Who? I am one who understands the way the world works. It would be futile to proceed. Naught but despair awaits you within. Go back to your world and you may live a long life. Continue onward and your life will be very short. Oh, come on! Now we have to continue onward! Doesn't she know anything about human psychology? We're going ahead, and not just for the cats. Being told it's futile makes me want to check it out more. Right? That's what I'm saying! I think if I remember correctly... Oh, whoa. Fairies. Oh, they're just chilling right there. Ah! That thing was fast. Here. All right. Um, get you real quick. 
So... Guess we just go this way, I guess. Huh. I do know there is a cat's chest in this area, but it just says the heavenly steps. Yeah. That's good to know. Okay, that's oh, that's where we fought. Uh, was that where we fought Milkyor? I don't remember. No, it can't be because. All right, keep treading along, smashing things in our way. Fair enough. Do 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 do. While you're hunting that down, I actually need to hit the bathroom real quick, so I will return momentarily. Sounds good. I will also be using the bathroom real quick. I shall be back. I am returned. Sounds like Zal is not back yet. All right. Well, let's just chill in front of this pretty rainbow door. Let's chill in front of this rainbow door for right now. Let's check it out. Oh. That's a room. What the hell kind of place is this? Look! There's a cat! Oh no, Meow! The cat's out of the box! By being observed, the question as to whether or not I'm lost has been resolved. However, in accordance with the conscience theory, I give you this gift. It's another cat's towel. Th thank you, Miss Cats. Are there any other lost cats around here? Yeah. My careless friends continued further on. How were they able to progress? There's a trick to it, Meow. 
It seems that this temple is the true form of the heavenly steps. But reality is distorted here. So meow, it's connected to a bunch of other places. The source behind the distortion seems to be a particular demon. Or rather, the malevolence it's exuding. If we get rid of the malevolence, will everything connect normally again? Yep, but be warned. Once the malevolence is gone, the reversion will happen immediately. Ugh, what a hassle. How to proceed through the heavenly steps. Flames of malevolence disrupt your passage through the heavenly steps. By extinguishing the flames, you can temporarily open the way forward. How to extinguish the flames of malevolence. Touching flames of malevolence causes a large number of demons to appear. When you defeat the demons, a number of black embers will scatter. Extinguish all the embers to open the path forward. However, if left long enough, the embers will rekindle the flame of malevolence. Make sure to act, you act quick. Other obstacles besides the flames of malevolence can block your path forward. These include red and blue candles that can open and close doorways. If you see anything out of the ordinary, you should give it a closer look. Ah, fuck it. Let's look at our hot springs outfits. There. Then... There. Alright. Well, let's keep moving forward. You have to do a bunch of weird nonsense like putting out malevolence and lighting candles to move forward. Don't get too worked up, though. Just go at a comfortable pace and you'll get through it. I'm not gonna risk touching anything until Zal gets back. <laughs> okay, my mic is not wanting to be turned back on. <laughs> okay, fair. I've tried to turn it back on multiple times and it keeps going, no. I thought I heard something, but I wasn't quite sure. Yeah. Alright. I've been here yakking to myself. Alright, well, I guess we got our new big thing to do. A giant-ass dungeon. Floppy set, where was this against Inomi not? Good question. Hey, is everyone alright? Demon's Bane. A piercing blade made by fiends to destroy other fiends. Adamantine bracelet. Bracelet that uses adamantine as a mana catalyst. Incredibly durable. Let's take a look at what they look like. Black embers burst. Oh, shit. And they keep making more. Did you see that? Oh, that just took fifteen. Oh, 
is over. Titan's knuckles. Bracelet that turns the wearer's fist into divine hammers. Nearby malevolence is temporarily weakened, and the path forward is now open. Quick to the Stargate! Temporarily. When the malevolence is spread thin, touching a thorn burst then what makes the big stuff come back more quickly. Gotcha. It might make life easier to get rid of thorn bursts before trying to tackle any malevolence. That's what I did before, so. Yeah. When there's a ridiculously powerful demon around, you have to defeat it to move forward. Prepare yourself and give it your all. If you're defeated, you'll only be sent back to where you came from, so just go for it. That's easy for you to say. Hmm. Uh. Scout. All right, let's take a look at these new items I got. Mm-hmm. It looks cool. I'll give it that. Yeah. Not really something really I need right now. Speed. Uh, you had a couple things. Titan's knuckles. I mean, not, it looks kind of cool. Not bad. It gives him a good like 180 bonus to his damage. That's cool. Yeah. Ooh. Actually, these ones are pretty good for him. Yep, they're okay. more defensive, but... There you go. To the Stargate! Give me cat spirits and I'll help you out. Meow, does that sound? I'll heal you if you're not feeling well. I'll give you a clawsome item. I'll create a warp point for you. Perfect. Mm -hmm. Then... I don't know what I just got, but... My guess would be the Adamantine Blade. Probably. Because that was a new thing. Oh god. Let's see, what are you first? Okay, that... Aha, fuck you. I honestly did not think that that was an enemy. I thought it was something else. It's like those little root CD thingies. Yep. Soul bottle. Very nice. I crave souls. All right, Alexander Anderson. It's a, it's, a it's a shame your blood sugar daddy won't be here to see it. And I like killing things because it's fun. So just you pray. Just you pray. I laugh that they did that entire thing. Mm-hmm. It is a it was a, it is a pretty good one. They kind of had to. It was also probably HBI 2K's best performance. True, he did awesome with that. Yeah. And we are. Huh. So it leaps back to here, maybe. Yeah, back down's the way we came in. But then we don't, and then I think this one's gonna be closed off. No, it's not. Okay. Answer. So we got you this thing working. Hmm. And turn them all on. So if we turn that blue one on, we'll flip it off. Flip it on, flip it off. Okay, that probably wasn't the best. That wasn't the correct thing way to do that. No. Okay, so the flame's on here. Let's put. Let's turn off the flame here. Maybe that'll do something. Or turn it on, I should say. Flip the switch. No. no. Hmm.
Okay, let's go through this Can one then. Go through this one? Oh no. Definitely proven to be a long and arduous journey. Bitch, I ain't going nowhere. Checking order. <laughs> uh, let's see. Let's check this one real quick. Okay, that leads back to this one. And did that unlock the door upstairs? I don't know. No, it did not. So I must have must have been that one I missed. That I was like, oh, I don't need to turn that one on. Obviously it doesn't work. There should be like one more, like this one right here, maybe. But that one mm -hmm. might turn off this one. We'll see. Yep, it turned. Yep. Oh, this is gonna be a headache. Yep. Sounds like a headache for another day, though, because yeah. I'm already starting to flag. Yeah, fair enough. All right. So. Well, that'll be a fun thing to add to my long extended um whatever we do for the next yep. session for this. And